a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, try again. Stop. Yeah, actually, you Chang, you're speeding up as you're going through. You're actually getting faster and faster. So can we go back to the beginning, please? And let's, it does say joyfully, but let's see if we can uh, slow down, keep a nice steady tempo, please. Lost it on the end there. Can you do the last line again. That's right. Yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that you have your metronome on. You were doing pretty good to stick with it. Good job. Okay. There were some spots where you were still trying to rush. But then you listened to the metronome and you got back in with it, okay? So that was really good. So, yeah, you just have to focus all the way through the song, just like your dad was saying, okay? And if the metronome helps you to do that, that's great. I wouldn't suggest that we have the metronome on for your performance, though, when you do the recital. But it's an excellent practice technique to use the metronome and be able to play with it. Um, that will help you big time later on. Like, when you... If you ever have an opportunity to go and do some studio recording, like if, if somebody asks you to play on their, um, their album on piano, um, you will most likely have to learn how to play with a click track. Playing with a click track is just a fancy way of saying you have to play with the metronome, right? So if you already know how to do that, you'll be better than a lot of other people, right? Uh, playing in time. Uh, if people that don't learn how to use the metronome, they have a really difficult time sometimes playing exactly on the beat when they're supposed to. So that's good practice for you, Yucheng. I've already learned for myself because I've done lots of studio recording in my lifetime. Uh, I've already learned that learning how to play with the metronome really helped me when it came to my recording experience. So there you go. Okay, so that's that mm -hmm. one. Uh, then what was our actual homework? What's the first song? Shepherd the Quark. Uh, which one? The D five finger scale. I think. Oh, okay. So we okay. We won't do that. We'll. Can you do the cheers for D chords? Okay. Yeah. Let's do that one. Pedal down. Yeah. Did you practice this, is, or is this new? Practice. You practiced it? Okay, go for it.
Very good, Yu Chang. Good job. Uh, did we do the old man songs on the next page? Yeah. Okay, whenever you're ready, this right hand old man. Very good. This left hand like old man. Song. What's that, sorry? Like a little song. Yeah, it's just a little song, isn't it? But let's keep going. This left hand old man. Right. So actually, like a, in this song. It's like a different song. A little bit. Um, in this song, it's actually supposed to go up to the number 10. So it goes, this old man, he played one, and all the way up to 10. There's 10 verses to it. So you could do it over and over and over until you get to 10 if you wanted. But we're not going to do that. Did you do spring on the next page? Yeah. Okay, let's hear that. Uh, you played a wrong note, you Chang. The, on the eighth notes, the first note is a two on E. You played another F sharp. So it goes like this. Okay. No, you did that incorrectly again. It even shows you the fingers. That's right. Did I play that for you on violin? Mm -hmm. Did I did I play that for you on violin, you Chang? No. No? So the actual tune, did I show you the YouTube video for it? I don't know. Oh. Because this is actually a violin concerto. It goes like this. Right? So it sounds yeah, like that. Uh, that's hard to play that. On violin, yes. <laughs> it's so um, hard. Yeah. So it's uh, hard to me. For you mean to play the song or to play violin? Violin. Yes. Violin is a hard instrument to play. Yes, it is very much. Um, so the best uh, thing for you to do is to go on YouTube and actually find the Spring Violin Concerto and watch it. Watch somebody playing it. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's a very, very famous piece of music. So if you want to educate yourself a little bit, go on YouTube and watch it. Okay. But you don't have to play that again. Did we do the Pirate of the North Sea? Yeah. We did this one? No. No. Okay. I'll play it for you. This is in D position. Goes like this. I'm the pirate of the North Sea. I'm brawny and strong. I'm the captain of my fine ship. I sail all year long. I have treasures from all around the world, diamonds and gold. I'm the pirate of the North Sea. I'm brawny and Old. There you go. Why, why you got a treasure of a gold? 
<laughs> I don't know. He's got diamonds and gold in his treasure. That's what he says. He's the pirate of the North Sea. So maybe he's he's run around and he's captured a whole bunch of different ships and blown These them up and took so all the treasure. Strong. What's that? Sorry. These are so strong. Uh, yeah, he looks pretty strong, doesn't he? Yeah. All right. So did you try this one on your own? Did you try it already? Yeah. No. So let's try hands separate then. Okay. So let's do the right hand first. This is in D position. Don't forget, you've got F sharps everywhere. Okay. So just the right hand. So those two notes, Yi Chang, have a slur over top, so make sure you connect them. And then F sharp. Keep going, we're at bar nine. So it's five on A. Whoops, that's skipping. A, F sharp. Yeah, so make sure we hear the eighth note. So T T Ta. That's it. Oh, it's short. It's staccato. Yeah, it's it's short and hard because it's loud, accented, and staccato. So exactly, you hit it as hard as you can. Uh, then we have the left hand, which is also in D position. From the beginning, please. The next note is an A with your thumb. That's right. These are staccato. And then thumb on A, and you'll hold it extra long because it has the fermata.
Gato. Make sure you do, yeah, and make sure that your thumb doesn't hit the E by accident. Yeah. Good. So you can definitely work on that one for next time and try to get it hands together. So you just have to watch out to make sure that you're making a difference between staccato notes and notes that are slurred, right? So that's to what you have to watch out for in that one. But otherwise, you did good work sight reading that one through each end. Good work. Uh, so then we move to the next one. The next one's called the Queen's Royal Entrance. This one's a little harder because the hand positions are moving around. So you need to really pay attention to your notes and make sure you're watching the chords to see if they're stepping up or down. Okay. I'll play it for you so you can hear it. There you go. So I didn't sing that one. I like to sing that one usually, but I wanted you to be able to hear it. And since um, you can't see me, um, it was important that you heard the piano part, not my singing. Because <laughs> you did really good on the Pirates of the North Sea, but this one's a little more complicated. So I wanted to make sure that you could hear the piano part. Okay, so- Why do you have to move around? Well, piano music moves around, dude. It doesn't always stay in the same hand position. If it was always in the same hand position, music would be boring, right? So if I play this for you, you've heard me play this before, I think. If Mozart hadn't wrote so that, this one is moving around too. Yeah, big scales, lots of scales. So if Mozart hadn't written it with all those scales in there, it'd probably just be boring to listen to, right? It'd be very plain. So there's 88 notes on your instrument. If you count all the white notes and all the black notes, there's 88 keys. So we don't want to just pigeonhole ourselves into one little hand position. That's boring. You have to learn how to get around the piano and utilize all the different kinds of sounds we can get, all the high sounds and all the low sounds. So this is why eventually as you move through these books, they're gonna make you move to different hand positions all over the place, okay? That's the whole point of getting uh, better at your instrument is learning how to expand your ability to play across the whole keyboard, okay? So uh, at the very beginning on the second bar, you can see they've circled the finger numbers. That's how you know it moved in that spot. But after that, they don't give you any extra help. You need to watch the notes and make sure that you're seeing if it's moving up or down, okay? So it starts on D position, on D chord. So can we do the right hand by itself first, please? So can you find that D chord? Just the right hand. And then it moves down one to C chord. Oh, you moved down to the next octave. You only want to move down one note. So where's C chord? All right, and then it moves back in the next bar. 
it starts with a D chord, but then it steps down again. It goes back and forth. Very good. And that's four beats. Now you're on the next line. T T ta. And then it moves. And it moves again. Good. Then on the next line, you see underneath the pedal goes down and it stays down for two and a half lines. So can you try that with the pedal, just the right hand part? So they show you the fingers to play. Five, two, four, one. Sounds a little bit like Star Trek. And then the next line on the next page, it's the same notes again, but softer. Or actually, no, it's a little louder. It's mezzo piano. Five, two, four, one. Yep. And then the eighth notes go like this. Two, one, two, five. And then next line. Two, two. And now we're back doing chords. There's no more pedal. Uh, so, And then on the next line, then on this bar, watch out, you chain, because they're giving you a couple of extra chords to do. So it goes, I'm looking at the bottom note of each chord, D, F, E, D, okay? Now it goes up to F. That's an E, we want F. You have to go up one more key. No, where's F? Yes, F, A, C. That's right, then you move down one to E minor. And then down one to D major. Oh, but F sharp in the middle. Yes, can we do those four chords again like this? Good, that's how it's done. And notice underneath of those chords, it says ritardando. See the little rit sign? So make sure when you're playing it, you get slower, okay? All right, let's go back to the beginning and let's try the left hand. This starts on D position. And it's also doing a bunch of moving, so you gotta watch out. It's a staccato. Uh, no, no, no. Um, the D chord there on bar three is a staccato, Yi Chang. It's a D chord. Yes. And then the whole note, still D chord. The next line, still a D chord. And a C chord. And then staccato on the next one. Uh, 
counts, right? Then you get a couple of bars rest, and then it goes one, four, two, five, four, four. Next line, just A. Two, three, four. Whoops, it's still at A. It's still A. And then you're on bar 16. It's still A. But it's louder, it's accented. Yeah, and then the D chord. C chord, no more pedal, and then staccato. The whole note. And then the last note, it says go down an octave and play a low D. That's right. And it, it could be loud because this is all loud. There you go. Yeah. So the left hand part's not as hard. It's not moving around as much. So um, you can work on getting this one hands together for next time. And that's about it for our time, buddy. So you can do this one. You can do the Pirate of the North Sea. And then you still have Ode to Joy to work on for the recital. Okay? Okay. Awesome. You did really, really good today. Good job. So I will see you again.